We all have aspirations that we'd like to achieve in our lives, and while some have the mantle and the drive to succeed with a can-do attitude, it would seem that some have the direct opposite of this positive attitude by constantly engaging in self-sabotage behavior that prevents them from the intentions that they set for themselves. So what's behind this self-doubt and self-sabotaging behavior? To help us answer these questions is life coach and relationship expert Leah C4, and also Nikki Robertson, an NLP practitioner and nutritionist, always love Lovely to have the two of you on the couch. Welcome. Thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thanks for having us. So let's talk about this idea of self-sabotage. I'll start with you, Leah. What exactly is self-sabotage? It's, it's the subconscious way of stopping yourself from achieving any intentions or goals that you set out for in your life. So whether it's financial, whether it's around eating, mm. in your relationships, with work, in any area of your life, you may have an intention of wanting to change something. And sab self-sabotage is that there are subconscious uh, forces at play yeah. that are going to stop you taking the action you know you need to take to get those results. Okay. And Nikki, I mean, is, is self-sabotage a thing or are there different kinds of self-sabotage that we might be looking at? Yeah, I think self-sabotage manifests in different ways um, You know, and there's different reasons for it. I also think we are all guilty or have had an experience of sabotaging ourselves to an extent yeah. um, throughout our lives. And sabotage can come from a fear of success. It can come from a fear of uh, failure. It can come from low self-esteem. It can come from perfectionism. And that's probably in um, in my circle where I deal with people trying to eat well. It's things need to be perfect before I can start, which right. is a classic self-sabotage <laughs> because nothing's perfect in life. Yeah. You know. So yeah, there's many manifestations and the trick is recognizing it. Okay. Mm. And Leah, where did this idea, or where does the, the fact that I'm now, if I've got a self-sabotaging belief or behavior, where does it come from? Is it ingrained from childhood or is it from a trauma or how does it sort of evolve? All of the above. Look, any external behavior is going to start dictating your belief system. Mm -hmm. And we are very and highly susceptible when we are very young. Okay. So the younger you are, the more deeply entrenched your belief systems are going to be. It isn't to say that later on in life, you still can't be affected by external circumstances. Yes. So um, I think a big one for people is a fear of failure. And it's, it starts in school when you get humiliated in front of the class doing an oral or um, you know you, your, your parents uh, shout at you because you didn't do something perfectly. Um, and you're so worried about, please, everybody else that you just start to not be good at something because then mm. you won't disappoint people so oh, okay. it's 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 preempting the perceived failure and then not letting yourself go there anyway because you don't want to disappoint right. and it's, it's one of the ways that that um, self-sabotage plays out is that you you can you're cutting yourself off at the knees so that you just you're not setting other people up to be disappointed in you and that right. starts young Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay, I mean, is this, is this something that's very much a self-conscious thing? I mean, are people consciously self-sabotaging or is it always an unconscious, subconscious thing? I think to begin with, most of us start off unconsciously. We don't know we're doing this. We just mm. know we're not succeeding. Mm. So we are failing to pay off our debt or yeah. we are failing to get in shape or we are failing to achieve a degree. And we're not really conscious of why. And we start saying, well, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe mm. I don't have discipline. And when we can start questioning what are the patterns, what, how am I setting myself up um, to fail, then we start becoming more conscious of self-sabotage. Doesn't mean we're gonna fix it. Right. That takes working with somebody who can help you identify um, at what point in the process you start tripping yourself up. Okay. That's quite tricky. Yeah. And then you can start unpacking it but with anything. It's consciousness and recognizing the behavior first and okay. knowing you're doing it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And Leah, what would be some indicators or telltale signs that somebody has self-sabotaging tendencies or behaviors that they could identify for themselves? Oh no, sure. I mean, I think, look, anytime you're procrastinating, you are self-sabotaging. Okay. You know that there's something to do and you're putting Netflix in the way and you're <laughs> going to eat something and you're going to do something else. People are consciously aware that they're doing right. that, you know. So procrastination is a big one in self-sabotage. Any turning to any substance, any coping mechanism is self-sabotage. We, we, we're talking alcohol, drugs, eating, mm. um, you know, TV gambling. Any coping mechanism can be self-sabotaging, and um, and you know when you're supposed to be having that conversation with your partner. Yeah. You know when you are supposed to be not spending that money because you're supposed to be paying off debt. That's when you are conscious that you're doing it and you're going to do it anyway. Okay. So so the, the, those are the main ways that we self-sabotage. Mm, and I think blame as well. Oh, victimizing. Yeah. Right. It's not wasn't me. Fault. It's everybody else's <laughs> fault. I okay, had no control okay. of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's one. a big one. Yeah. Mm. So from this discussion, it sounds almost like there are, there are many things that are um, an impact on our, our psychology and our, our mental state 
that fall almost under an umbrella of self-sabotage. So it's mm. not necessarily that self-sabotage is a completely different thing. Mm. Am I correct in, in that understanding? I think so. Okay. I think it's part and parcel of a whole bunch of circumstances and things that happen in a person's life that leads yeah. them to that place. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the, th the, the lack of self-worth is, is not having the belief that you can do it. Right. The fear of success is having to live up to everybody else's expectation. And the big thing about a fear of success is that imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So you're scared that you're going to be caught out as a fraud or that people are going to catch you out as you never knew what you were doing in the first place. And right. that's scary for people. And so people go, well, how would I be so scared of success? It's, it's that. It's, it is the fear of failing. Um, what I find most powerful around um, sabotage is around cognitive dissonance. In other words, your, your behaviors are always going to want to align with your beliefs and your values. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've got a belief system or a value system that tells you you are not worthy, consciously you think, I really want to go and be a public speaker, um, but that doesn't align with who you genuinely believe you are. Uh, okay. And when that is out of alignment of what you're consciously trying to do versus what you subconsciously believe, that's where the sabotage is going to kick in. Right. Because your mind is going to go, no, no, we can't be public speakers because yes. remember, we're not worthy. And then you're going to do something that's going to sabotage that experience from happening. So okay. it's exactly like Nikki said, you have got to investigate your deeper beliefs and your mm -hmm. deeper values. And that's where the shift has to start. Okay. Nikki, give us a couple of examples, because I mean, obviously you can have self-sabotage in your personal life, your work life, your social life, um, and probably many other aspects of it. So wh what would be some, some key self-sabotage um, behaviors? So from a point of view of health, and I'm going to talk specifically about eating right and exercising, and that's right. where I see sab <laughs> sabotage on a daily basis, yeah. is I'm not going to start eating until I get to the gym. Or eating right until I get yes. to the gym. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not going to start exercising until I can get to the gym. You can walk around your garden. Mm -hmm. And if something's important to you, again, ba values, beliefs mm -hmm. become our behaviors. So if it's that important to you, you find a way. And making healthy choices is something you do in every minute of the day. It's mm -hmm. a choice you make from moment to moment. It's not a diet you go on. It's not waiting until the conditions are perfect. That is classic self-sabotage because yeah. the conditions are never yeah. perfect. So making any change in your life, whether it is improving your financial situation, improving your health situation, is the choices you make in the minute. Doesn't matter what the next minute brings you. Doesn't matter who is going to create disruption. If you're making the right choice for you in this minute, you can maneuver around that. But again, aligned with your values and belief systems. Yeah, so I think yeah. we've got to work on that first, Absolutely. what's really important to you. Absolutely. Then we can stop with the self-sabotage. Yeah. Hmm. And I mean, from what you're saying as well, it's a it's a one step, one step thing. It's not from here to there in one move. That's kind of. so important. Yeah. And that's why most dietary interventions don't work mm. because it, it seems too big and too daunting. It is a tiny little step right in this minute. Mm. What I can control now, not controlling my environment, not controlling my family, not controlling the politics of the country. Right. Yeah, yeah. We can't control that. Yeah. We can control what we do in this, only in this minute. And when we can get that right, then things start to shift. Okay. Mm. So Leah, let's give a bit of strategy here, maybe from a coaching perspective. If you, if you now are looking at this and thinking, sure, you know, I've got some tendencies towards self-sabotage. Mm. What would you say would be the first tiny step to make to start that change and that shift? Look, I think there's, there's a few very particular steps. So for me, the first one is recognizing that self-sabotage in itself is fulfilling a need. Mm. Y you've got a hole. You're trying to get it fulfilled by some way, and um, and um, if it's if it's consistency and comfort, which is always what our minds are programmed yeah. to do, is to keep us safe. Um, it's it's sabotaging anything that's making us to feel fearful. Because if it, you know at any time when you are stuck in a thing of overthinking, when you are feeling uncertain, when you're feeling completely unsure, what you're actually doing is sending a signal to your brain to say something is wrong here. Okay. And the minute your brain senses that something is wrong, it goes into panic and paralysis and goes, no, no, okay, well we need to keep you safe, so don't take another step right so it's recognizing um, that the um the, the overthinking and the uncertainty is the problem mm -hmm. and making a plan so having a plan of action is extremely important like uh, plan your diet ahead of time mm -hmm. you know plan the steps you want to take to open your new business plan what you're going to do to pay off your finances have a plan of action commit to it and stick to it every single day the thing that I always say to people around self-sabotage is you've got to get comfortable with being uncomfortable yes yeah. people want to avoid bad feeling at any cost why because quite honestly if you look at your life the time that you've really 
really significantly made a change was preceded by an uncomfortable feeling. Mm. You were either overweight and uncomfortable in your body, which pushed you to want to go and do an eating plan, or you suddenly got into crippling debt and you were in big trouble and it pushed you to make a plan. So the discomfort is a good place sometimes. Yes. And people just got stop avoiding being uncomfortable. The uncomfortableness is going to be there. Mm. Um, and then the last thing was very much what you were saying just now is I call it having a pre-mortem. So not the post-mortem after everything has right. fallen apart. It's going, what could go wrong? What obstacles could appear? And what failures could I experience? Okay. And if you can foresee that and go, well, like I know there's a work event coming up next week. Well, then I need to plan my eating accordingly. <gasps> I know there's going to be a black you know friday sale but i'm paying off debt you know that that external event is coming plan ahead of time to go i can see it's coming i see you mm. and i'm not going to let you ruin my path right. so foresee what's coming down the road and it, that helps you to stay in the moment okay mm. and then nikki we don't have too much time but i do want to get from an nlp um, perspective how can that assist in um, getting off the self-sabotage wagon but also keeping yourself off it so nlp is largely about reframing mm. it's about looking at what's going on and understanding it from a different point of view or putting a different label on the experience. Right. So the linguistic part of NLP is the language we use to describe what we're going through. Okay. And if we can change the language of what we assume is going on in our lives, we can change the chemistry in our brain and our experience of that. And then that opens up possibilities for change. Okay. So it's about changing the, the words that we use to convince ourselves of our stories. Okay. And when we change that, we become present. We become mindful of the of the verbiage we use to convince ourselves that we're right. Yes. And it's a story. It's a, we just give ourselves a different story. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a, it's so key that as well because it th th we talk about positive thinking. But if you can if you can talk yourself into a positive frame of mind, then you you starting to win the game. Or see it differently, or or just step out of yourself for mm. a minute and look at it from a different perspective. Absolutely. That's really, all it takes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, ladies thank you so much lots to work with there i mean even i can look at a couple of things in my life and say hmm, you know there it is so thank you for coming in and sharing your knowledge with us thank you wonderful